You have questions, we have answers in this edition of Ask Realty Times. Let's take a look at some of this week's questions. Is it a discriminatory practice to run background and or credit checks on potential purchasers and use such information to select a purchaser? As an owner, your goal is to sell the property for the best price and terms. You want to find a buyer who is both ready and willing as well as able to purchase. Buyers today routinely obtain pre-qualification or pre-approval letters from a lender to present with their offer. Such hand-holding letters should not be seen as absolute. For instance, the property may not appraise or there may be other issues. If a lender letter does not accompany the offer, then you should require a prospective buyer to provide a letter within a given time, say 10 days. Your real need is to know if a lender will finance the transaction. What might seem like poor credit to you may be fine with some lenders and under some mortgage programs. In effect, let the borrower and lender work it out. If you're providing some or all of the financing, then you have the same right to qualifying information as any lender. For detailed standards and proper forms related to your jurisdiction, speak with an experienced real estate attorney before accepting any offer. Here's our next question. My insurance company wants to drop our coverage because we're not occupying the house. We moved into a new house and currently have the original house on the market to sell. We're still paying the mortgage on that house, are required to have insurance by the lender, and want it insured. What can we do? Most homeowner policies have a provision which says that coverage ends if the property is continuously unoccupied for 30 days. The theory is that an unoccupied home is more risky because, for example, if a fire breaks out and someone is home, the fire department will be quickly called and damage limited. Speak with an insurance broker and ask about vacant house coverage. Such policies are typically available on a monthly basis for up to six months. Because a vacant home represents more risk than one which is occupied, expect higher premiums. Here's our next question. We've been searching the market to purchase our first home and have a choice between three surrounding cities. Why do housing prices change so much from one city to another even though the homes are basically the same? In real estate, all property is non-homogenic, a fancy word meaning that all properties are unique. Not only are duplicate homes in different cities priced differently, duplicate homes on the same street can have differing values as well. All homes represent a package of values, location, size, condition, and other factors which can create differing prices. For instance, imagine that a builder erects a Foxworth model on one site and sells it for $300,000, and the same model five miles away sells for $400,000. Same house, different price. Why? Maybe land costs are higher for the second property. Maybe the second lot is level while the first is not. Maybe the second home offers better commuting or views. As a buyer, it's your job to find the property that represents the best package of values given your needs and preferences. Brokers can help you locate candidate homes that may meet your requirements, homes which may be within a range of values. That's all the questions that we have for today, but if you have questions or need advice on a specific real estate situation, please visit us on the web at realtytimes.com. We look forward to hearing from you.